good. Maine says we are live, and Jeff is here, so we're going to start. All right, thank you all for coming. My name is Kevin Arata with this City of Fayetteville Corporate Communications Department, and we are here today to talk about downtown parking. Before I begin, though, I'm going to ask, we've got Nathan over on the side with a microphone, so when we do get to questions at the end, please, whoever you are, use the microphone because we are Facebook living, as are a few others. Uh, we're also recording this from our cameras uh, so we can play this back on Fay TV. So we would take your questions uh, and make sure that they're, they're broadcast properly. Uh, so a couple things, as I was mentioning before we started. So first off, the maps to my left here show event day parking and regular parking. All of this information can be found on the city app. So if you check out our city app and go to the left side or to the bottom side there, the blue P for parking, all of this information comes up. The sheets I've handed out to you before, which I'm going to go through here in just a moment, uh, will actually show all of that same information. You can also go to uh, FayettevilleNC.gov slash downtown parking. And when you do that, if you bring up on the mobile friendly version or on the desktop, but uh, right here, second button down, click on downtown parking and the same information will come up that's on the city app. So the point is all of this information is out there. It's mobile friendly, easily accessible by residents. So I'm going to go down a few of the sheets, uh, uh, key points that I've got here. And behind me, I've got folks from the fire and police uh, who can speak about their side of things. Uh, also, Lee, uh, with uh, traffic services, public services, traffic engineer, who can uh, share information. There you go. You're welcome. All right. So first off, let me just say that uh, before we start this, as with any operation, uh, we are going to constantly monitor what's going on here from a parking perspective to make sure that whatever we do uh, now and into the future uh, is right, is right for our citizens and those patrons who are coming downtown for a baseball game or for any other large event. And so what we start with on Thursday the 18th is really uh, making sure that's the first big event that we've got, the first baseball game. Uh, so this becomes our start point. And we will constantly monitor and assess using all of our experts back here to make sure that what we do into the future works and it works well. Uh, and so, again, I stress that start point and we will constantly get better. Uh, and so from an overall parking perspective, could you go to the next slide, Gavin? I'm waiting. Can, yeah, there we go. So if you look at the front of the screen here or up on the monitors around us, that really shows the overall parking that's available for the entire downtown area. So 4,360 spots available across the entire downtown. That includes paid and non-paid parking, private lots, government lots. Uh, everything is on there. And so really the intent is to show, again, 4,360 spots, as Walker Consultant showed us from a 2018 study uh, that puts all of our parking spots within a five to seven minute walking distance from the baseball stadium. Uh, so we think that there's a lot of parking out there available. Uh, moving down to what is available on event days, the intent for, again, the first baseball game, but any future events that we have downtown uh, is for $10 per space uh, for people to park downtown. That's in the paid city lots. Uh, and so if you look over to my left here for the green lots that are indicated, uh, that shows you, again, what's online. Uh, a total of 1,100 spaces to include the handicapped accessible ones. There's 104 of those. Uh, and that's everything that's paid. What I'd also like to point out is that the 600 plus on street parking spots that are out there that are currently not monitored right now will be free. And so I know residents, business owners had expressed interest in where do they go, what do they do. That 600 becomes a first come, first serve. Uh, area. So when you look at where you can go, those really are those spots. And so as you look at what's available down Hay Street for what is open, uh, those spots down there, the ones on the back sides of these streets where it's normally marked for, for weekend parking, uh, those things will be available for, for free parking during event days. Um, the parking attendants in the paid lots uh, will be able to take debit and credit cards. Uh, and so you can bring cash, you can bring debit and credit, but it will be easier for you to get in there and, and make sure your spots are paid. Uh, the parking times, it'll be two hours prior to two hours after the game starts for any baseball games. Uh, events, of course, will, will be uh, probably two hours prior to whenever that event would start. Uh, but that gives you a window in terms of when you need to get down here and get into a spot. Uh, from an accessibility perspective, as I said before, 104 spots uh, currently annotated in the blue over here. Uh, they're behind City Hall, so directly to our rear back here, two city lots called City Plaza 1, City Plaza 2, again annotated on the mobile map, uh, are where our handicapped patrons can park, and it is $10 for them to park as it would be any other place downtown. 
uh, for on-street parking, as I mentioned, 600 uh, on-street parking locations. And then from a private lot perspective, as you can see from the, the wheel in front here, there are currently um, right now over 1,100 spots in private lots. And so that would be things like the church or the area behind Husk or any other private lots that the city does not manage. Right now, it is not our intention to track those lots and to figure out what they're charging, not charging, open or closed, uh, because that can change as the wind blows. And so that really becomes what they're going to do from a private entity perspective. And what I would really uh, reiterate there is just like any other big town, uh, when you go to a downtown event, uh, you find a lot that's open and it says $10 park here and you pull in and you pay and you park, uh, whether that's private, whether that's city owned. Um, from a pedestrian friendly zone and, and really our fire and police folks have done a fantastic job to figure out what other cities do, what other municipalities do in that area. Uh, we are looking right now, or not we're looking, but we are going to close Hay Street from over here behind us on Winslow all the way up to Ray. So basically from the Amtrak station up to Husk Hardware will be a pedestrian zone. Uh, so no vehicles allowed in there. When the parking garage is eventually open over here, those with access to that will, will be able to get in and out. Uh, but that's not something that we're going to focus on for the first couple games because it won't be open yet. Um, and then for future parking, really just to reiterate, this is, a, this is a work in progress. We are constantly looking for ways how we can improve upon where we're at now. We think we've got a good plan in place. Uh, we think we'll be ready for the first game on April 18th uh, and any future events that come up here. So with that, what are your questions? And remember, Nathan's got a mic over here. Paul. So are you... I didn't quite catch you count the county spaces in your on street or off street parking also. Good question, Paul. So the county places are not counted in in what we show up here, uh, where it says off street government. That is that's the county spaces of 1144. We don't yet know what the county is going to do with those spaces. We do have a meeting with them on Thursday to determine how we might work with them uh, to utilize those spaces. But right now, uh, that's really a, a county uh, county lot, and what they choose to do with that will be up to them. So. They may choose to charge or not charge. Exactly. And what about uh, park and ride type situations, or maybe someone across town might want to bring a, a, a you know, a, a woodpecker's van from their shopping center or their church? Are you making arrangements for them to have drop-off zones? Any ideas? They would just be required to uh, exit their drop-off at any parking lot or other public area that they could access and uh, drop their patrons off at to access the ball stadium. To my knowledge, they will not be allowed within the pedestrian area zone. That's correct. And I guess similar for Uber or taxis? Correct. Who's next? Regarding the private parking, have owners of those lots been approached and asked to allow people to park there? Or are we just on our own? Lee, can you like? We uh, work with the Cool Springs Downtown District to gauge uh, any interest from a private parking perspective. At this point, again, as Kevin mentioned earlier, this is a work in progress. So a lot of our private lot owners are, are going to see how we begin in this new adventure we're going on and adjust accordingly. Uh, as far as if they've decided to manage any on their own, they're not required to acknowledge that to us in any way. Uh, I, I believe there will be some private lots that will be managed. However, I'm not sure of the specifics of where they will be and how much they would charge. So folks who may drive in from who knows where into the Medical Arts Building parking lot, which is about the closest to the stadium, I suppose, the private lot, you're just taking your own chances. You may get there and find out it's blocked off or it may not be. Well, using that specific example, Jeff, it's owned in, uh, by the Cape Fear Valley Health System. So uh, I, we've had some uh, conversations with them, and I believe they've indicated they will be managing that lot. But, again, that was just information they divulged to us, us, so we're not sure how all the other lots will be managed. And the only handicapped is the areas behind City Hall. Someone in a wheelchair or on a cane or crutches has got to walk from there to the stadium. There's no shuttle of any sort. That is correct, and that's – an. Uh, the closest parking we could use to accommodate our ADA patrons. Again, in our other off-street lots, there may be ADA spaces signed in those lots as well. Obviously, they're not as close as here, so we wanted to provide this as a, a little more convenient access to the stadium. Somebody had a golf cart 
and they wanted to utilize it to help folks. Could they do that, or would they have to sign up with the city to be allowed to do it? I can't speak to that, Jeff. I don't know if our security folks have any. You know what I'm saying? Somebody might have a couple of uh, six passenger golf carts, and they're willing to bring them downtown. Yeah, no, Jeff. And not, unless it's um, a vehicle worthy to be on the road, that's what they need to be restricted to. Uh. We know it's inevitable that people are going to have to walk maybe about five to seven minutes. What is uh, the plan, uh, police department wise or security wise, to make sure that those uh, visitors feel safe walking uh, if there's a late night game? So, this is not anything new. You know, we, we've done the Dogwood festivals and many festivals that happen in the community, and that's our responsibility <laughs> is to make sure everyone's safe. We have, uh, we have a plan. We have scheduled different levels to have multiple events occurring within the city. So not only are we trying to make sure everyone gets downtown to the baseball event or any event safely, us having the manpower out there in the community, in the residents, to make sure they're safe, um, making sure we're roaming the downtown area for the parking lots, the citizens being vigilant as well. You see something odd or strange, tell someone else. Call it. Um, call anyone, an attendant that's in the parking lot. Let us know what's going on so that we can make sure communication and everyone's coming downtown for a great event. So we're always going to be vigilant. We're always going to plan. We have plan. Um, Captain Brayton has worked very hard with the whole team of <laughs> emergency management to look at downtown and say at what level, how many personnel we bring in for the events, how many multiple things we have, and that's going to increase how many officers you see. Um, so we, we have a plan for each level, um, but ultimately the goal is everyone work with us, uh, communicate to us if you see something odd or strange, and don't be a victim. Lock your items up, uh, make sure it's secure, and just um, enjoy the enjoy downtown first of all. So. And I have another question. Is there any uh, negotiation underway between the city and the Prince Charles to have any type of parking spots, whether it be handicap or just um, any baseball visitor parking spots in that garage that's being so, built right now? Right. Good question. So right now the garage is currently uh, tenant owned. And so between the hotel, between the gathering at Prince Charles and the um, What's the other one? The office space, the 90 to 120,000 square, square foot office. Those are the folks that have rented. That's what's paying to help us pay back the garage. There will be flex space in there so that from an electronic perspective, it's constantly monitored to make sure that the folks that need to park there do and can, and, and there will be spaces that are open. That's something we'll have to figure out as we move forward. We so year. once that garage is open and once all of those tenants are there, do we open this back up? Yeah, we can figure that out. Uh, the important thing I think I, I like to reiterate to folks is the fact that those people have designated spots in that garage means they're not hunting downtown for spots and they're not going to take those away. And so I think that's the goodness of it. Those people have a place to go. That garage was never intended for the baseball stadium. It was intended to house those people in there. And those things could not have happened. The Hyatt, the office space, and the gathering at Prince Charles had that garage not been there. They never would have existed. Um, Thank you. Thank you all for using the microphones. I like this. And so do our patrons who are watching this on TV later. They can hear. Uh, regarding the uh, Amtrak station, you know, if there's someone who needs to, you know, pick up someone at the train station at the same time as a game or, or they need to be dropped off there or go there because they're going to be traveling, uh, are they going to have vehicle access even though Hay Street is otherwise closed? Chief, do you know? Yeah, well, they have the... the parking lots they have the street and we have communications right there in front of it so they have the same access as that that's where the road is going to stop um, and be closed off right there so they also have the parking lot uh, the most adjacent across the street what is that called cat break hay and winslow, hay and winslow. Um, no yes hay and winslow and they have the asom parking lot so just check out the map it's accessible um, if the road's going to be closed they can drop them off right there because the road's closed it's almost like a, a drop and move location for them so, so the, the, the the site where the road is closed is right by the amtrak that station. is right so at the amtrak they're essentially station. at the door anyway exactly okay uh any i mean jeff kind of touched on this any, any talk of a trolley or other kind of vehicle to circulate the parking to help bring people particularly the handicapped people to the to the door no there is not i mean the they, council has looked at that before but it's not something that we've pursued right now uh, and so the bottom line is we've got these 104 spaces behind us that are within a couple hundred meters. Uh, we think that that will work, and, and we'll constantly monitor and assess the situation to see if there's something we can improve upon as it moves forward. And then uh, with the parking deck, they're going to have the first two floors open this summer, they told me yesterday. And uh, they did say that they intended to have 
just in, in regular operations, I think during during business hours, during the week, a hundred and something odd spaces available to the general public, and then after hours and weekends, as, as many as 300 or more, I think. The numbers are approximate in my memory. But anyway, the right. point is, spaces are open to the general public in the parking deck. Why not allow the park public to park there during baseball games? It's Again, well, that's something that we'll work through as those spots open up and we figure out how the occupation works between the gathering folks, the office folks, when that eventually happens in the Hyatt. But I, I don't know the number off the top of my head of the spots available on that first floor and how many tenants are going to be occupying. But that's certainly something we'll take a look at. And who gets the revenue from the parking? Revenue from the parking. You know, $10. Um, I believe it goes back to the city. I get the impression you're almost totally dependent on social media and your web, your app, your city app uh, to get the information out. And you, that's why you're here. Yeah, I understand. But a lot of people coming into town who don't read our paper or the other papers watch TV, how do they know where the handicapped parking is going to be? Are you going to have signs posted? There will be signs out. Good question. So there will be signs that say where the city paid lots are, uh -huh. and there will be signs that say within those which ones are handicapped accessible. I actually saw a parking sign on Ray Avenue pointing to the library the other day, only a downtown parking sign I've ever seen. Right. But you'll have new signs up showing people where to go. Correct. And they can be dropped off near the bus station, uh, the train station. Handicapped could be going that way if they're just being dropped off. I, I don't see why any. Yeah. So we're not saying there's a designated drop-off point, one. It's just like any other road closure, any street. Uh, we want to keep the traffic moving, but we want, we want to give information to the public of where to go. That's why you're here. That's why we're having the signs. We're also going to educate the officers that are out there, any employees that are out there, to be able to um, share where other parking lots are. Um, in regards to the evolution of getting the information out there, yeah. we've, we've discussed possibly having a, even a pamphlet for the individuals who might not have a smartphone to be able to communicate this out. But understand, this is a fluid mm -hmm. information as people come in, so we're going to try to get as much as possible, Jeff, okay. and direct them. Can you say how many additional officers you'll have on duty that day? It depends on the day of the event. So, but, but minimum, just for downtown, the lowest amount is going to be at least five. Whoa. Just <laughs> And that's a very midweek, yeah. just focusing on I'm the thinking baseball. about the 18th, for example. We've got a sold-out stadium. Yeah, that's not going to be five. <laughs> yeah, a lot that's going to be that. That's going to be probably um, a lot more because not only do we have the baseball stadium, but we have Doggo Fest on that date. Oh, that's right. So we're going to have a lot more than that. Okay. All right. I think one thing to reiterate while we're waiting for the mic to move over to you, we got you, sir, is, uh, is at the risk of sounding flippant here. This is not like any other city that has a baseball stadium. They're not unlike any other city. People figure this out. When I go down to Columbia to visit my daughter and I go to the baseball game down there, I don't go, oh my gosh, I can't go down there because I don't know where to park. I drive around and I find it. And I, again, I don't say that flippantly at all. People will figure it out. And I think between the folks we've got back behind me here and all of their great staff and the effort we've put into this, we're going to make it happen and we're going to make it work. We're going to figure it out. But, but that's not the point. The point is not to take a smart quote like that and say, we'll figure it out. People are smart they figure things out. We've got a spot up here. We showed you where to go on the website. And when I go to any other city, as I'm sure many of you do, you drive around and you find a spot and you park where it says open and you go by the ones that say full. I think the important point here is there's 4,360 spots downtown. If every single person in that baseball stadium drove their own car, we'd still find a place to park them. And so I think we'll fit. Yes, sir. I was wondering about the, cl the closures on Hay Street and how often because it looks like you've got they've got season tickets for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and so it'll Sunday. be during specific events that it'll be closed from here until from behind us on Winslow up until Ray. And again, that's to create the pedestrian friendly zone. Now, how and many me, times a week? Let me, now let me elaborate on that. Um, initially, it's it's brand new. It's sold out. We got multiple things happening. So right now is another another reason why we're closing it. We have this construction site going on that we really can't drop anyone off and be safe. We want people to safely walk this the sidewalk to get to the venue. So we're going to monitor it at least the first. Uh, for at least a month to see when can we start pulling back and what time periods we can start pulling back um, the road closure. We're gauging possibly just an hour before the game where we shut the road down. But midweek, if it's if it's free flowing, not as busy, of course, we're going to try to accommodate the downtown community. But ultimately, we want the people to walk down the street safely into the baseball stadium as well as make sure the, uh, the construction 
is not stopped or hindered in any way and is not a safety issue. Right now, it's, it's, it's very hard right now to drive past, if not walk past, the construction site across the street. Imagine that influx with the, so many people walking down. We want everyone to be safely in and um, just walk to the baseball stadium. So um, that leads me to another thing. Crosswalks, are we going to add any more crosswalks downtown? Uh, even, actually, I've seen two accidents on – Don, on Franklin and Donaldson, with people going the wrong way down Donaldson, I think we need a, a – it has a do not enter sign, yeah. but we need a going the wrong way sign so as because we, there's been two accidents there in the last month. I'll let Mr. Jernigan answer that, but as we first assess the evolution of new city, new construction, new stores, really evaluating that sidewalk, we've talked about it. We've talked about the ability to look and see our sidewalks. How can we make them safe? How can we have cross, cross uh, walks? If we open up the road so everyone can safely cross and not just all of a sudden bum rush the street to say I'm in the middle of the road and cause an accident. That's why we pick the points um, that we have to try to have as much, least impact in the downtown area as, as possible, but also give a route to drop off in all the different parking lots and, and walk and really uh, enjoy the downtown. Lee, did you want to add something? Just to supplement what the chief said, um, we have signalized crosswalks at the end here at Hay and Ray that – exist uh, at the beginning of the pedestrian zone. We're currently under construction right now to complete the other ones here at uh, Winslow and Hay. So all of those approaches will also have signalized pedestrian crosswalks at each end of that pedestrian zone. So, um, you know, that that will provide an additional level of safety for them. I'm pretty sure those streets, that Hay Street is safe to walk across. Um, like Franklin Street, it's almost impossible to kind of get across. And if people are going to be parking in those lots, we'll need safe things. Even people taking their kids to the Capitol Encore Academy, they all park. I, I have a business on Donaldson and Franklin, and they park in that lot back there, and they walk to pick up their kids. And it's almost impossible to get across Franklin and other other parts, like by Maxwell, too. Um, so I was wondering, with the extra parking and with people having to walk, what would we add them to some of those side streets? Again, it's important to remember we'll be monitoring these. You know, we. A baseball game is, is, is one size event. A baseball game uh, ongoing simultaneously with another event is something different. So that obviously has more tenants than, than one single event each. We'll continue to monitor that and see if there's any changes that we need to make. And, and Chief, you want to reiterate that? I want to add to that. Your input is valuable. Where you see those outs, those outskirts streets and roads to be able to communicate to Mr. Jernigan. So we are aware of what do you have, what's going on, what's the height in traffic. Um, I think I heard the mayor even speaking about it today, talking about um, having a, a better crosswalk, more vigilant um, access. So um, if you can communicate that, as the community can communicate to us, what do they see as we evolve as a city so that if we need to increase the crosswalk uh, um, for those time periods, we know that information to be able to address it so we'll probably get your information afterwards so and just just to add to what the chief said earlier as far as uh help us uh, i mean i know that everybody's excited baseball starting we got a lot of new events a lot of exciting things happening downtown but still as a pedestrian it's you still have a responsibility as well to make sure that, that, that the coast is clear and that and that you're watching out for yourself uh, in, in, in traffic <laughs> well, and my last question it, Anything on parking meters in on uh, on street public parking? So part of the parking study that Mr. Rada mentioned earlier uh, made some recommendations to transition to paid on street parking. Obviously, we're not implementing that at this point, but in the next months, uh, we will be working with uh, city council to to implement that. So there will be a lot of changes. Again, it continues to go to that dynamic atmosphere we're in for over the next months and years to transition to paid on street parking. And uh, as we add the Hay Street Deck and other parking assets, that, that model is going to change. So uh, events like this is where we can get that information out and make sure the public is aware and get your feedback so on, on if, how, how if it If I works. could just say, I've, I've had a business down here for ten, almost 10 years. And it's pretty hard to keep a business open downtown for 10 years. And if I'm there 30 days, I'm there six days a week, basically. If I have to pay $4 a day, you're adding another 200 something dollars to my rent just to keep a business open. And I'm, I'm concerned that every waiter at Piero's is going to have to pay $200 to park to go to work. And nobody's going to work here. And we've tried paid parking. And we took it out to revitalize Fayetteville, you know, I think. So I'm, I'm just kind of worried that 
every the, your, the money that's going to be made off those parking spaces are going to be the people trying to run businesses and trying to have jobs downtown. That's what I'm concerned about. I just wanted to voice that concern. That comment is well received and, and we'll consider it. Again, we have some time before we make that transition. Uh, it's not going to be in the in the really near future. So uh, we'll certainly be uh, seeking feedback and providing input uh, on that as we transition. I just have one quick question. Um, with Hay Street closed, it looks like there's only one entrance in and out of the stadium. What is the plan to um, kind of filter people in and out safely with that many people going into one entrance? There's actually two. I mean, you're coming in from this side here between the Prince Charles and the, and the uh, hotel and then coming in from the back side. And so there would be two points. There's only one stadium entrance, but two places to come in right here and then on the back side across over near the traffic circle. So you'll have to walk through that construction zone? That, is that open over here, Mark? Do you know? Is that going to be open here in the next two weeks? What's that? Yeah, and I think we're talking in the next couple of weeks, I guess, is the question. Yeah, obviously, during, once this thing is fully done out front with the plaza, Hurley Plaza, which is still being constructed, absolutely. But in the next week or so? There you go. Jeff, another question? Um, have you all factored uh, when you're doing your estimates on traffic downtown and so on and, and parking needs, uh, did you include Uber uh, and Lyft type use in that uh, estimate? I don't know. Is that something to give you directly? I would say these numbers uh, are more conservative. I think any uh, app-based ride-sharing program would reduce the demand that we're showing here today, so it should only improve our parking issue. It may be me, but for Mark just mentioned that Ray Avenue will be a public entrance exit. I've never heard the city say that before. I've heard it said that it will not be. So will it or will it not be? The Ray Avenue. Right. By the pedestrian zone to get into the main entrance. To by the, the uh, circle there. Correct. So That's the public it. will have access to the stadium in and out at that entrance. The entrance to the front of the stadium, the main entrance to the stadium is right here. I know where the main entrance is, right. but you're now saying, Mark is saying that Ray Avenue will also be an access point to the stadium. It, yes, so there will be two places you can walk to the main entrance, one right here and uh -huh. one from Ray Avenue, both which converge to the entrance into the stadium. But you can't go in the Ray Avenue at no, entrance. you can walk in the front of the pedestrian area. The front of the pedestrian area. Right, the promenade. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But you can't go into the stadium itself. No. You have to walk around the corner Correct. to the main There is entrance. one entrance to the stadium, but there are two points to I'm enter. I'm glad I clarified that, Mark. You can access the box office on the Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So, Here, give him the mic. Yeah. This is the marquee entrance for Sager Stadium. You can enter via the plaza walking through here or walking through the entrance of Hay Street. You converge on the entrance of the ballpark here, and this is the main entrance where you give the ticket taker your ticket and enter the ballpark. So you could park in this lot, walk through the plaza here, or if you parked here, enter through here. Regardless, you're converging here at the main gate. Correct, where the, where the rotary is uh, on Ray Avenue. So you walk through that area, but you can't walk into the stadium. You have to walk to the main entrance right here, where we'll be collecting tickets, correct, next to the team store. Does that work? So different than what Sheena was asking, which is those are two different directions you can come from. Yes, one spot to go in. Yes. Any other questions, Paul? So we're sold out on the first game, but what's do you have an estimated uh, game attendance throughout the season once uh, the initial excitement uh, Mark, of course burns through? There we go. So 
we actually will be announcing today um, that we can open up the ballpark to more fans than originally intended. Um, we will be selling additional general admission tickets as of this afternoon. Um, and that number will now exceed 6,000 capacity for the ballpark. Um, we have, we expect to sell out our first weekend of the season. Um, the fan reaction has been tremendous. Um, you can see that in the community. You can see the excitement. It's palpable. Um, if we sell 6,000 tickets, we need essentially one parking spot for every three to four fans. Therefore, we need 2,000 parking spots for our games. As Kevin mentioned, there's over 4,000 parking spots in downtown. However, we think it's appropriate to walk 10 minutes to go to a baseball game. If you walk 10 minutes, I estimate there's more about 8,000 parking spots that are available for our fans. So there are roughly four times the amount of parking spots available than are required for our fans. Um, in terms of Prince Charles Hotel, the high place, et cetera, the reason why they are, the garage is necessary for those projects to be possible. J Jordan Jones and Prince Charles are making a very large investment in our community. Those investments would not be possible without that garage. If you are an office tenant, if you are a resident, if you are at the hotel, you need a parking spot at your spot, at your location. If you are a baseball fan, you do not need to park 10 feet from the ballpark. You can walk five to 10 minutes to the ballpark. As we've discussed, there are anywhere between 4,000 and 8,000 spots within 10 minutes. And our fans can park four or five blocks away on Franklin Street, have a nice seven minute walk through downtown, have dinner at Piero's, shop at one of the downtown locations and go to the ballpark. We expect the private businesses to open their lots to fans. The city's done a tremendous job of coordinating these efforts. It is their responsibility. However, we have a vested interest in all this communication because it impacts our fan experience. Families that own ballpark, that own businesses and own private lots around the stadium can make a significant amount of money for their family by renting out these spaces for $5 or $10. We have 70 home games. If you have 100 spots at your private business and you rent out those spots for $10, 70 times 10 times 100, do the math, you're looking at $70,000 a year for your family. So we hope and expect all the private businesses to open their lots to our fans. Not only are you making money for yourself, for your family, but you're also giving a better experience for our fans and you're doing a lot of support for the city. Um, and again, we want to thank the city for a lot of work. Um, we've attended some of these meetings to help. And I can tell you that there's a lot of brain power that goes behind this. That's a great question. Um, we expect to have the highest attendance in our league this season. Put it that way. No. Mark, you said 6,000 fans per game. Correct. The stadium capacity will now be, is the stadium capacity is 5,200. However, we have the ability to open up our concessions and other areas to service a higher number of fans if the demand is there, correct. Our official capacity is 5,200. Um, if the demand for having more fans attend the game is, is there, our staff can essentially add bodies. We can open up more areas of concessions to facilitate that, add security, et cetera. We have a high number of general admission tickets. Um, now, the term general mission is, is vague, I, I agree, and, and sta I don't like the term standing room only because that is not the case. Um, the ballpark is a full 360 concourse. We have a lot of what we call non-traditional seating. Non-traditional seating are high top chairs against a drink rail. We have lounge furniture, in including chases and couches that will be available at our landing deck at a right field bar. We have berm seating where you can bring your blanket and have the whole family sit. 
um, enjoy some popcorn, enjoy a hot dog, and sit on that, that Berm Hill. Um, there is, so the term general admission, don't think of a general admission as I won't have anywhere to sit. This is a full 360 social atmosphere. Um, that's what minor league baseball is. That's what's the beauty of minor league baseball. Um, so just getting yourself in the ballpark, you're going to have a great experience regardless of what type of ticket you purchase. Hey, Morgan. Okay. Mike, back to Morgan. You can, but then anybody else can hear you. Um, I don't, and it may be too early to tell, but what's the estimated economic impact from folks walking um, as a result of having to, you know, walk from far away parking? I don't, well, I don't even want to say far away, but. Sure. Yeah, that number I don't have off the top of my head. I just know that it's going to be significant. If you calculate in just what Mark talked about, which is 6,000 people down and a gentleman over here with a business, I, I dare to say that with that many people downtown, uh, business is going to increase greatly, I, and uh, it's fantastic. I mean, it's a fantastic thing for the city for the number of people that it's going to bring to this downtown area. Yes, sir. Uh, Mine is two questions, if I may. One is concerning uh, the gentleman just mentioned five to ten minutes, and I see Moore Street, there's a lot of vacant land there which could be utilized for parking, but it's not on the map. I don't know if it's outside the range, or, but it's closer than the, uh, uh, the county facility. So uh, just as you begin to look further for additional parking lot, there's a lot of land on Moore Street. And the second question it is, is that Amtrak parking, is that uh, could it be wearing that in the future that portable signs could be put uh, up uh, for Amtrak loading and unloading 10 minutes, uh, whatever, because there are difficult there may be people that's coming in that's very impatient with traffic and try to board the train. So if there will be two designated signs, one north and one south, saying Amtrak uh, loading and unloading 10 minutes, uh, you know, that would help the officer with dealing at some point in time with difficult people trying to board uh, Amtrak. So that's just uh, some long-range planning that if you would look at that is just a suggestion yes sir no we'll absolutely take a look at that and again we'll, we are going to adjust as we move forward and that's something that we can take a look at with our, our police and uh, uh, traffic services folks and then to your point on the moore street uh, parking area that's something i know as lee had mentioned earlier we're constantly in dialogue with the folks out there to figure out what's going to happen that's not a, a city-owned piece right so so I, I think really we wait to look and see what happens from a private lot perspective sir and if they choose to open that thing up uh, then that's really something on the, the uh, individuals to do. But I would, I would think that that would happen uh, as the owners figure out that that's a fairly profitable uh, measure that they can take during, uh, during event days or game days. Any more questions? Do you anticipate more fans on days when, we, when we've got a home stand against uh, the Mudcats, you know, basically right up the street? Yeah, right, more Mark, people coming into town rather than the other teams that might have more of a, a longer distance to drive? Um, I'd like to say that Carolina might be our, our newest rival given their uh, vicinity to the ballpark. Um, I would say when we play Carolina, there's, there could be a higher chance of a sellout. Uh, they do have a great fan base in Zebulon. So, um, you know, as I mentioned, we expect to – come close to selling out every single one of our games. And so we expect to have a full house every night. Um, will there be more fans when we play Carolina? It's, that's definitely possible. All right, any other questions? All right, so look, if I could uh, reiterate nothing else, and Jeff, this goes back to your question on how do we get this information out there. I think we have done, uh, with the help of the folks behind me here and all of their staff, 
uh, a very good job, if I do say so myself, in terms of getting this out here somewhere where it's accessible. And so if you go nowhere else, FayettevilleNC.gov slash downtown parking, or go to the top of that page, we have put it right on there, downtown parking. It is in a very obvious place where people can see it. And again, back to your question on how we put that out, we're going to put it up on the digital billboards we have. We'll use it in some paid advertising that we have to reiterate. This is something new. And this is something we need to move forward on letting people know that it's there. Uh, but I think at the onset, and really goes back to what the core of any municipality does when they advertise, is if you have questions on where that might be, that information might reside, you start with the city website. And so you go there. The app, different story because you've got to get people to download it. We've currently got almost 11,000 downloads on that app, which is pretty darn good for a year. Uh, we're encouraging and hoping more people will download it because it does make it friendly. While we have a mobile-friendly site, uh, the app basically books mark, bookmarks that page for you, uh, and we'll use that information or, or use that platform to get information out to. Uh, but I really do want to reiterate all of the great work from the folks behind me here and their staff that we've gone into making all of this happen. Uh, we don't take this lightly. This is going to be a huge boon for the downtown area and for the city itself. Uh, and so from a parking perspective, I think we've got it figured out. I think that we will also move forward and improve this as much as we can for every event that happens from now into the future. So one final question to Jeff, and go ahead, Chief. Uh, in short, yes, sir, it will be. We're blessed in the fact that we have three fire stations within four minutes drive of the stadium, which is unique. Um, like I said, we're blessed with. Um, that coupled with the fire protection features that's built into the facility makes it a very fire safe venue that we're excited about. Um, we do have plans where we will be staffing EMTs in the stadium during games and other events and the number of EMTs that's based on the size of the crowd. So. All right, thank you very much for coming today. We appreciate it and if you've got any questions afterwards certainly come up and approach us.